Next up, we have Cody and Brock Anderson versus QT Marshall and Aaron Solo. The big, uh, the big debut of Brock Anderson. I thought he looked good. I liked. I thought he looked really good. Um, I thought this was a really good, you know, fundamental tag match. Uh, Cody got a good, really super hot hot tag uh, was tight and Brock gets the pin and a hug from dad. And, you know, I thought this was, you know, it wasn't anything spectacular or mind blowing, but it, it definitely did what it needed to do. It gave Brock the chance to show what he can do. He looked good. He got the pin, you know, he got a moment with his dad. So I, th I, I liked it. I like the psychology in the match a lot. I like that QT was avoiding uh, locking up with Cody and like sort of forcing Solo to do a lot of the leg work during the match. And then QT just wanting to go in and like fight Brock, knowing that he has the advantage of experience over him and stuff. Um, I like, I like Brock's uh, physical capabilities. I think he looks, he looks good in the ring. Um, I'm nervous now that they're going to do, you know, the Brock Anderson heel turn and Arn oh, and yeah. Brock are going to turn on Cody and, you know, <laughs> kick his ass. Because I, I do enjoy the Arn-Cody relationship in AEW. Yeah, so. I think they're good together. And, you know, I mean, I think if anybody else leaves the Nightmare family, they're barely going to have anybody left. You know what I mean? So. I don't know. I don't know if I can see that happening, and especially this early on in Brock, uh, his career. Um, I think he is kind of a natural baby face for 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 a while. Um, if they're gonna turn him heel, I think it would have to be you know down the line when he's established as a baby face, as opposed to now when he's kind of you know, initially over as a baby face, but not really that established as one. And so the turn wouldn't be as, you know, impactful, I think, if he's like only just established a character and it suddenly changes. Yeah, I feel that. Um, I liked this match a lot. I like the feel of all of these Cody matches. I think it's really important for them to have a Cody related segment on every show mm -hmm. just because I feel like it gives the company more variety. Like there is an undistinguished change of style from, you know, the Rancho Cucamonga high flyers to, yeah. you know, this old school wrestling. And I think it's, I think it's important. This match too would have been a great match to start the night with um a lot of a lot of good matches that could have that could have opened dynamite yeah yeah i agree with that um i think another thing that might go a little under the radar in this match is aaron solo looked really good too uh we yeah. didn't get to see him a lot uh and he didn't get to do anything too flashy so it could be it's it would be easy to not realize that he 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 had a great match too he looked good um he he made a, he made a lot of other people look good too um which is an important thing to an important skill to have as a wrestler so i want to give a little shout out to him too yeah he was doing a lot of the work for this match mm -hmm. and he really made everyone look like a million bucks so definitely that was great and i like that there wasn't a lot of like you know chicanery with with nick camarado you know they let it be be sort of you know an honest match right yeah yeah i think they have a tendency to fall into the trap of you know wanting to tell stories so badly that they end up having every match have a distraction finish and it gets a little old after a while. It's, at some point, you want to just see a match where nothing happens, at least during the match, you know? Um, 
which in some cases for some, you know, for like, for like heel champions, it's kind of necessary uh, to some extent, although it would be nice to be able to see heels that can win without cheating. You know, that's, it's okay to have heels that can win without cheating. Um, but well, I think Miro, matter. Miro's proven that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But he's like a dominant yeah. uh, figure. Um, the Young Bucks, you know, we the the premise of the Young Bucks is that they are, if not the greatest tag team in the world, they're one of them. And for them to be like cheating in every match, like, you know, the Young Bucks should be able to beat some of these guys without cheating. Um, and then, you know, at the same time, like we get that, oh, you know, it's maybe it has something to do with like they're insecure you know maybe they are actually that good and they're just they've just become insecure and that's why they're joining up with the elite and becoming bad guys and cheating all the time i think you're giving them way way more complexity than, than they deserve i mean you know head cannon is a is a thing for a reason so in the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicott. for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name. You're listening to the Wundercast. What's up, everybody? This is Jason David Frank, Green Ranger. You're listening to Wundercast. Oh, God! to the Vonda cast.